Hello my friends, it's me, Rhea Peterson. Welcome back to my channel. If you are needing motivation today, I have got you. I've got over two and a half hours of deep cleaning, decluttering, and organization content for you, and I'm so glad you are here. We are hitting closets, bathrooms, kitchens, living rooms, and even my backyard, and I am excited to help motivate you throughout the tasks that you need to get done today. If you're new here, again, my name is Rhea Peterson. I upload twice a week on Tuesdays and Saturdays, and I cover things like this, and I'm so glad you are here. If you're not already, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Let's get started. I'm laying down at the compiling. Oh no, I see you only when you're balling. I see you in the wild Cause this time I will choose you, yeah Now choose You know exactly how to look like this Holding in a bag full of goods and needs I need a night like this Hey everyone, it's me, Rhea Peterson How's it going? I've got quite the list today. I am giving my living room a deep spring cleaning, washing walls, the carpet, even my couch, and I'm bringing you along with me. If you're new here, my name is Rhea Peterson and I upload twice a week on Tuesdays and Saturdays and I cover things like cleaning and organization and mom life in general, and I'm so glad you're here. If you aren't already, make sure you click that subscribe button. Let's not waste any time. Let's get started. I can't help to fall for you. Okay, so here's the majority of our supplies. There's a few things I haven't gotten out yet. Um, here's our list of things to do. It makes sense to me. I've been taking down Easter, so I need to finish that in the living room. And then I just kind of tried to write it out in the order that I was most likely going to do it in, like the order that made the most sense. I'm trying a new cleaning method on my couch. Instead of pulling all the covers out and putting them through the washing machine, I'm just gonna do this to freshen it up a bit. I'll talk more about it, but that was part of what the boiling water was for. A lot of you suggested that I use these on my blinds. It's like a squishy duster. I'm excited to clean the blinds with it. I've already used this one and it's all solid, but I think they're supposed to resaturate with water. So fingers crossed. I've got the carpet cleaning solution out. We are going to, we're gonna clean the carpet. I'm gonna go a little harder on it this time. I've seen a few people do it and I figured I'd try it. I'm gonna vacuum it and then clean it on this side, flip it, do the carpet cleaner on the other side and then flip it back over and just do like the, um, the vacuum part of the carpet cleaner on it to get it extra triple clean, hopefully, we'll see. And then I have my steam cleaner as well because we're gonna clean the window sills with it and I'm hoping it'll be faster than using Q-tips. It should be, I hope so. So what we're gonna do is clean up all of the clutter here in the living room first, take down the rest of Easter, push the couch back and we're gonna do the couch first, get that drying and move on to the carpet. How are you doing? What are you doing today? Have you ever flipped your carpet and cleaned the other side before? I'm a little afraid of what, what the water is gonna look like. Ooh. tell you now I don't I don't recommend flipping your carpet and cleaning it on the other side but I'll talk about it more when I'm cleaning the carpet it's just it's taken a while to dry and I'm not totally sure that it did much I'm gonna get all of these pillow covers in the washing machine I want to get those cleaned and then the method I'm using for the couch it's not like a deep clean I could take all of the covers off of the couch 
and wash them. We have a love sack. All of the covers are removable, but it is a pain and it's kind of hard to do. So I don't want to do that, but I do want to freshen up the couch. So I want to get it vacuumed. I'm going to use the Tide Pod method to just kind of clean it up a little bit, freshen it up. But there are a few spots that I do need to spot clean. So I'm, I'm going to show you what I do for that as well. <laughs> but oh, this was a day. I definitely worked up a sweat cleaning this living room, but it desperately needed it. How is your spring cleaning going? Are you doing it a little bit at a time? Are you spring cleaning at all? I don't do it every single year. I think just the last, since we moved into this house, I've been really into making sure that I get everything deep cleaned, but it hasn't always been something that I've done. But I'm gonna take apart some of the couch, not all of it. I'm gonna get it pushed out of the way. Let's get it vacuumed. Oh, and all of the wrappers. Fun fact, my kids aren't supposed to eat in the living room. It's going great. Is it just me or is it really satisfying that I could fit all of these cushions on the rug like this? It fit perfectly. My rug was just the right size for all of these cushions. <laughs> but obviously I am vacuuming. I'm gonna get all of these cushions vacuumed off. I want to vacuum all of the sides and go around the edges on the main part of the couch. And then I'm making note of areas that I need to spot treat. So then once I'm done vacuuming, I'm gonna spot treat all of that. I love how all of these cushions fit on here. It's perfect. I would awake, but I keep losing myself in these daydreams. You're right next to me. I can hear you sleep, but I know you're in a dream. So what I have is just some of that hot water and a little bit of Dawn dish soap and I'm spot treating all of these areas. This worked really well. It worked really, really fast. The only thing is, I mean, don't let the water be too hot or you might burn your fingers like me. I may or may not have, but it worked really, really well. It got all of these spots off. I'm pretty sure that was applesauce because Alice is like, that's what keeps her alive. So I find it everywhere. She sneaks packets out of the pantry. but. I'm gonna get all of these spots taken care of, get it all cleaned up. Also, fun fact, dish soap is such a hard word for me to say.
Okay, so from what I understand, you put your pod in the bowl, you pour on the hot water, but you need like a good amount so that it's really diluted. And then, you take your pot lid, and you can just like secure it on. And then it steams the cushions and makes them smell all fresh. I can put my covers in the washing machine really easily when they need it, and it's oh, it hasn't been that long since I've done it, but this is a good way to just like freshen stuff up. See, it gets all fun. So I'm gonna pour the water in, get that all diluted, and we will clean the couch. Hope this goes well. Well, it only took like a couple hours to dry, but the couch smelled so much more fresh and it just seemed a lot cleaner and I'm really happy with the results. I can pull the cushions off and wash them later. I do it pretty regularly, but it was nice to have a way to freshen up the couch without having to pull everything off every single time. I love this method and I'm gonna do this again in the future. The couch is done and drying. I'm very happy with how that turned out. It still smells so fresh, but we are moving on to the rug. I'm going to vacuum it. I'm not doing like a really slow pull with the vacuum because I'm gonna take the vacuum or the carpet cleaner over it a bunch of times, but I am vacuuming it a little slower to try to get as much dirt and dust up that I can before starting with the carpet cleaner. For someone like you, like you, So I've carpet cleaned this rug a number of times and I've never had an issue with it. I think the problem with flipping it over is oversaturating the rug with solution and depending on what your rug is made out of it could be shrinking the fibers. I'm not sure yet, mine is still drying. 
and it's been like two days since I did this. But overall, like the carpet is cleaner and it is flattening out, but you'll see at the end, there was wrinkling at the edges. And I've kind of been troubleshooting it, thinking about it, trying to figure out what happened because I've cleaned this rug a ton of times. Um, and one thing that if you do want to flip it, I would suggest not using the deep clean feature on your rug, but more of the express clean because it uses less water or just taking your rug to a professional carpet cleaner and they can stretch it and spin it and make sure that they really get all of the water out. Cause part of the problem is that my rug is still wet. It's not like sopping wet but it is still wet to the touch. I can tell that there's still dampness in the rug. So I, I put my couch back and everything, mostly just for resolution's sake to show you the living room. And I wanted to put it back together, but I've pushed my couch off again and the rug is still drying. You can see there's spots, like it was dirty. I pulled up a lot of dirt as you will see. So I, I'm still kind of like mixed feelings. Like I'm glad because the carpet's cleaner, but if it's at the cost of your rug and you have to replace it, like what was the point? How bad, like you're not laying on the underside of your rug. So I don't know, have you done this before? Did I do something wrong? I'm not sure. I, I just don't know if it's worth the extra effort to do this, but we'll see. See, you can see it's wrinkling at the edges. Ugh, I've never had that happen before. I'm annoyed, I am annoyed, but I, tripped and fell so that you could at least continue walking. You know what I mean? Okay, so couch is done, carpet's done. I'm gonna clean all the blinds, pull them up, clean the glass, and then this is the only window with window sills. These two don't open, so I don't have to do those. Um, so we're gonna do the window sills. I wanna steam clean in there. I, I don't know what to expect from these ones because they're under there there's a patio there so they don't get hit directly by anything but also it's probably disgusting so let's uh let's get these blinds cleaned i hope it goes fast i really hope it goes fast that thing it's awkward to get in between the blinds I could just completely be doing it wrong so I just have a really slightly damp microfiber cloth and I'm just gonna wipe the rest of them off it's gonna go that much faster I, <laughs> I didn't like it did I do it wrong I probably did it wrong it's fine they're my blinds. who cares it seems to be effective Well, 
Well, I really wanted the duster to work for me, but it didn't work for me. I know that others have had success with it though, so I wouldn't discount it altogether. And it does, that thing works great on dusting like baseboards and stuff, so like I'm still glad that I have them. But the microfiber cloth worked well. I was able to grab both sides of the slats, which was really convenient, and it worked out for me to just use that. I am using the Thieves Cleaner on the glass here. Just gonna clean the windows off really quick and then we will steam clean the window sills. Honestly, this was the thing I was looking forward to most. I am obsessed with that steam cleaner. decor and everything off of the mantle and the piano and I'm gonna wash the walls I'm using my O cedar spin mop and I'm just gonna use this I'm gonna scrub the walls and the baseboards at the same time just run this along the baseboards it should be really really quick I have some Dawn dish soap and just hot water in the bucket I'm just gonna wipe the walls down up the walls using the mop makes it go by so quickly I love this O cedar mop I think that it does a really good job I used it exclusively before I got my tin coat on the floors but this thing's just really really handy to have and I may never part with it but walls are done I'm gonna dust the piano get things put back together I want to put my decor back out put the living room back together and call it a day this was definitely 
a lot of work. I was really tired by the end of the day, but I'm really glad that I did it all. I only have days where I can clean. Other days I'm really busy, so knocking it out in one day is usually my only option when I wanna do something like this, but definitely if you can, break it up. You don't have to do it all in one day at all. I know people like to do their spring cleaning in small chunks. Some don't do it at all. Cleaning throughout the year, it might not be necessary, but getting all of the deep cleaning stuff done felt so good and it was really nice to just have everything wiped down. Our, we've got a lot of areas that could use a paint job, but just by simply wiping down the walls, it made it just seem so much brighter and cleaner and fresh in the house. So definitely recommend just wiping your walls down. Oh, it made it seem so clean. Like I said earlier, I'm putting the couch back together, but I did push it off of the rug shortly after once it occurred to me that it's probably good to let the rug dry a little bit longer. I had sucked a lot of the water out with the carpet cleaner, so on the top, it didn't feel that wet, but the underside was still damp, and I think just because I don't normally clean the underside, it wasn't totally in the forefront of my mind, so I would not recommend putting your couch back on the wet rug yet let it dry and then put your living room back together. Mine is still slightly damp, so it's taken a while, but definitely worth cleaning the rug. Still, the jury's out on cleaning the underside. Well, my friends, that is everything that I have for you. Thank you for hanging out with me as I deep cleaned my living room. I so appreciate it. I hope that you found this motivating. Let me know what you need to do in your house for spring cleaning. I so love hearing from you in the comments and appreciate the time that you give me when you hang out with me like this. If you aren't already, make sure you click that subscribe button so that you don't miss any videos. I still got lots of deep cleaning to do throughout my house and I'm excited to share it with you. I hope you are doing well. I hope you are having a wonderful spring. I will see you next time. Bye.
Hello everyone, it's me Rhea Peterson. Welcome back to my channel. Today is all things kitchen and deep cleaning. I am spring cleaning my kitchen and I have quite the list of things to do. I am washing walls, wiping down cabinets, cleaning out ovens, so many things to get done and I'm so glad you're here. My name is Rhea Peterson. I upload twice a week on Tuesdays and Saturdays and I cover things like cleaning motivation, organization, and mom life, and I'm so glad you're here. If you haven't already, make sure you click that subscribe button, hang out with me, there's lots to do, let's get started. Okay, so here are all of the supplies, and here is my list. It's a little bit long, but a lot of these things should be pretty quick to do. I don't need to clean like the dishwasher or anything. I have already done that in a number of videos. My most recent, I used my steam cleaner and it worked really, really well. But luckily I don't really have to do anything with the dishwasher today, which I'm happy about. But then just supplies, I'm gonna wash the walls with the mop. Here are all my cleaners. I thought about using like ice and salt and stuff in the garbage disposal but i'm worried about breaking mine and my dishwasher is already questionable so i'm just gonna play it safe and i got this lemmy shine that we're gonna try in there we'll see how it goes it'll be we'll both be learning when we use that one and then just a couple other things i'm gonna clean the stainless steel i got my little shining puff out to use on it we'll see i may or may not use it i don't know but then things like the scraper for the oven scrubbers, that kind of stuff. Some microfiber cloths and the steam shot. I'm probably gonna use this. I'm definitely gonna use this on the windowsills. I might try to use this in the oven as well. I don't know, we'll see. But there are all the supplies. There is Harley in all her perfection here to be moral support. And I have various children somewhere. Oh, I love you so much, Harley. Okay, I'm gonna start by cleaning above all of the cabinets. I have a vacuum since I took the Christmas decorations down. So I'm gonna vacuum and wipe everything up down there. First, I'm trying to kind of just work from top to bottom so that the floors can be covered and everything and I can clean it and just be done. So let's vacuum. Hey Alice. <laughs> I never cleaned these off after I took down the Christmas decorations this year. It has just been sitting up here, but to be fair, I it has been worse. The last time I cleaned this, it was all greasy and gross. It was a nightmare, so this was a lot easier. The one thing up here though, as you can see, there are some finishing nails that are sticking out. I had to be really, really careful. I did nick myself once, as you'll see but I am just keeping it simple. It didn't take much to clean up here. I'm just vacuuming it off. I used a little bit of Dawn Power Wash and a slightly damp cloth, wiping it off, and I'll just hit each one and do the same thing. The one over the microwave is harder because it does go back deeper, and so that is a struggle as you'll see as well, but it was good to get these all cleaned off. I should have just vacuumed it after I took down the Christmas decorations, but I already had enough going on, so I didn't bother. And thankfully it wasn't too bad. But I'm gonna continue to wash these tops of the cabinets. I hope that you are doing well. Let me know down in the comments, what are you working on? Today's video is a little longer than my typical amount of time, but there was just so much to do and I didn't even do it all. This took me two days. It was a lot, but it felt so good to get it done. And I'm curious, what do you have going on? What are some of your big ticket items that you have to work on? I think about all the years I made up and I think I'm running out of time. Stay 
to the vent over the stove this area can get pretty greasy depending on how often i'm using the stove so i try to stay on top of it i did dent the filters kind of bad the last time i cleaned it i was going to replace them but upon further investigation i can put that off a little bit longer so we are going to clean the dented filters here in a minute but the vent wasn't too bad i did want to like wipe everything off though and make sure that i got the tile cleaned off I'm just using the Dawn Power Wash and I scrub it in with a sponge, wipe it off with a wet microfiber cloth, and then I buff it out. I was going to use my big electric scrubber with the buffing pad on it, but I found that I didn't really need to do that. I just used the dry microfiber cloth for everything, so that didn't get used on this day, but it still looks really clean and shiny. I am really happy with it. I split this up into two days. I just had so much on my list and normally I only have about one day where I can get any good deep cleaning done, but because my list was so long, I opted to split it up and so I'm just using chunks of time that I have in between all of the other things we have going on. It is a very stacked spring for us with activities. My kids are just doing all the activities under the sun. I don't know if next year this will be sustainable. We're gonna have to rethink our lives but we're just trying this out seeing how we do the kids are thriving they love all of it so much but it's a lot for mom and dad to stay on top of with soccer and taekwondo and dance and school and hugo's in track it's just nuts but i've got my steam cleaner here that will help me save some time while that heats up i'm going to vacuum off the top of the stove that steam cleaner I'm going to use in a lot of areas. It is really handy for loosening up lots of burnt on stuff. I'm going to use it in the windowsills again, in the oven, but for now I'm using it to just kind of loosen up the grease and build up on these grates here. I'm going to scrub these off and keep cleaning.
need to get these grates rinsed off, but first I need to pull the filters out of the sink and spray them out. I wanted to show you, I got these, they're like ceramic berry dishes. I got them at Home Goods recently. We have strawberries and blueberries in our backyard and I'm really excited to use those to kind of hold on things when we go out to pick them. They're so cute. I wish they were a little bigger, but those little ones will be great for blueberries and sending the kids out to pick stuff. It was a very exciting find for me. And I'm getting these filters scrubbed off. I have to be careful because they dent really easily. It was very stressful. So I was just kind of jostling them in the water. Is that the word we would use for this? I don't know. A couple of other words came to mind, but they seem even worse. So I'm not even gonna bother saying them. <laughs> But I'm getting all the grease rinsed out. I let them soak for a while and I'm gonna let them dry for 24 hours before we put them back on the stove and rinse off those grates. I had to be really careful. The grates for the stove are like a scratchy metal and I was really worried about scratching my sink, but I was really careful and we seemed to avoid the worst of the scratching. We can only get there if we try. Lemmy things for the garbage disposal. I'm gonna tell you right now, it was a total bust. They did not foam up like they show, and I did it twice trying to see if it was just me. I did it with more water, less water. It doesn't say to turn the water off completely, but it just didn't foam up and it didn't break up any extra stuff down on the bottom. So this one was a bust. I might have to risk it and do ice down there or something, cause there's just a lot of, there's like a brown layer down there and that is not the original color. You can tell that it's just buildup of like grossness. I keep the garbage disposal fresh. I do have other cleaning pods to like get the, or I guess not the worst of it, get the easiest bits off, but this didn't do anything for breaking up stuff on the bottom. So I might go the ice cubes and salt route next time. I'm just really wary of breaking the garbage disposal. <laughs> So this is round two. Again, it was just a bust. It didn't do anything to break up the stuff off the bottom. Okay, so we've done all the tops of the cabinets. We've done the vent and the stove top. Everything's drying right now, so we're gonna head into the oven. I've been avoiding that one. I don't even use it that much, and it's gross, so 
We're gonna tackle that one next. So when we built our house, we had the option of just doing like a cooktop or doing a range because we were doing the wall oven. And I opted to do the range because then I would have two ovens. Uh, this oven though is not very good and it doesn't hold its temperature very well or even come up to temperature very well. So I don't use it that often. I prefer the electric wall oven over this gas one, but we still use it occasionally, especially when we're making like pizzas for dinner and you cook them at a high heat. So there's some drip, there's some mess in there. So I'm gonna do my best to get the worst of it. I'm just gonna use the steam shot. I decided to kind of experiment. So for this oven, I opted to just use the steam cleaner and my scraper to get the worst of it. And then for the other oven, I'm going to be using the Pink Stuff, their Miracle Cream, just because I figured I have the two, I might as well compare and see which can do what. And honestly, both did pretty well. The steam cleaner did a really good job of breaking up all of the like burnt stuff on the bottom. The wall oven, I didn't need to clean the inside because I had done it recently, but I used the cleaner on the glass so I could just kind of compare which one would be shinier. And I think the Miracle Cleaner did a better job on the glass, but this steam shot really broke down a lot of the burnt bits in the oven. The steamer certainly loosened all of this up, but I did use my scraper to get the worst of the burnt on bits. I love this scraper. You have to be really careful with it, but it's, it's so handy to have. done with this oven yet I still need to clean the racks from the inside and wipe down the outside it looks so much better in there though you can't even tell that there was that big black burnt on spot it did so good there's some soap left over from when I cleaned this stuff off the top of the stove but for the racks all I used was the steam cleaner and then the scrub daddy the scour daddy which is their steel wool one I loosened everything up with the steamer and then oh, scrubbed it off really, really easily. It was nice to not really use any chemicals and to just use the hot steam and the sponge. I try to keep the chemical use at a minimum. Um, I know it has its place and I know it can be really, really handy, but if I don't have to use it, I'm not going to use it. So these were really fast to clean and I just scrubbed them out, dried them off and put them back in the oven. And then I did use the Miracle Cream on the front of the stove, or I'm sorry, the oven, just to try it out on the stainless steel because I was experimenting again. I thought about using my big uh, electric scrubber with the, the shining pad again, but I had this stuff and I thought, let's see how it does on the stainless steel.
conclusion is that both methods are good. I think it just depends on what you have available. The pink stuff is cheaper than a steam cleaner, but the steam cleaner you only have to buy once. So I don't know. I was happy with both. I think I really liked how the Miracle Cream worked on the glass. It made it really, really shiny. I'm really happy with how it did on the stainless steel. Even a number of days later, my stainless steel is still looking really shiny. It has minimal fingerprints on it, which is not normal. Usually when I'm cleaning it, it will start to look kind of dingy a lot faster. So I think that both products serve their purpose and can be used interchangeably. I think they're both really good. It just depends on what you feel like doing, what you prefer, or you're like me and you have both and can just do whatever you want. I'm going to clean out the microwave, wipe down the rest of the stainless steel, and that will be the end of our first day and we will move on to our next day. I, again, was really happy with how well that pink stuff did on the stainless steel. It's still shiny. We are on day two of deep cleaning the kitchen. I want to tackle the blinds, windows, windowsills, get that out of the way and wash the walls. And then I have a few drawers that are just over full of junk that I wanna clean out, a few that I wanna vacuum that have crumbs. And then it's just wiping down and steam cleaning the counters, wiping down the cabinets, cleaning the floors, and we're done. This one, it's a lot more on the list, but they're ones that should go by a little bit faster. So let's keep going. Still alive. So 
if you were with me for my living room deep cleaning, I cleaned the blinds in there and I used those like squishy eraser dusters that they have out now on the blinds for a little bit. And I, I, I was not a fan, but I found that using just the microfiber cloth damp worked really, really well. Those blinds in the living room were not nearly as bad as the blinds in here. These were disgusting. They had so much buildup on them. It's as if I'd never cleaned them before in my life, which I had, but probably just because they're in the kitchen, they get a little bit worse. I don't know, but they were so gross. It was fun to see Alice out on her bike. Like it helped break up the time, but this took forever. I ended up putting some Dawn Power Wash on the rag to kind of help break through the worst of the grime. But you know, famous last words when I said, hopefully this won't take very long. I feel like I say that all the time and then it takes forever. I should probably say this is gonna take the longest it's ever taken in my life and then maybe something won't take as long as I think it will. Like this video itself is taking way longer than I thought it would, but we just did so much. There was so much to do and we're halfway done, but these blinds took an eternity. I'm Yes, I'm glad I cleaned them. Do I wish I could get that time back? A little, but it is what it is. The blinds are clean now and we can put it off again until next year. Well, they're not clean yet. I have to do the other side, but it was worth it, I guess. So let your gun down and I said See in your mind, trust that Have what it takes inside Cause you can make it too If not says who Yeah, you can make it too see my garden boxes out there that is like a high on the list I really need to get out there and clean out those garden boxes we're starting to get longer strings of nice weather which is wonderful but I want to go like take my kids to the park and do things that aren't pulling weeds but as you can see the dandelions are gonna choke out my strawberries there's strawberries in that garden box there where you see the yellow flowers and they're good strawberries, but they're not gonna be if I don't get those dandelions out. So that's high on the list. Are you a gardener? Do you like to garden? I love the idea of gardening. I'm not much of a green thumb. Like I pointed out, it's a miracle that orchid is still alive. I cannot believe it, but I do love to plant a garden. I love having the fresh produce. It is definitely a labor of love. I have so much admiration for people who farm who grow big gardens, who do all of that successfully, because I aspire to that. If I could be a farmer, I would love to be a farmer, but there's just so much I don't know. So, I mean, I can say that in complete ignorance because I do not know what it takes. One of you mentioned that you have like a cattle farm, and I think that is incredible to take care of all of those animals and to do that. It sounds like a lot and I, I don't, I mean, I can keep my three kids alive mostly. That and my orchid apparently, which is just as surprising to me as it is to anybody.
Can't you stay a little longer? You got me, got me going under. I'm a weak child. I forgot that the steam cleaner came with a glass attachment, so I'm just using the thieves cleaner on the windows. We're only doing the inside. Outside can be for another day and probably for somebody who I pay. I can't get the screens out because all of the clips are breaking and I'm sure that window cleaners have some type of magic that they do to get the screens out, but that's too much on my shoulders. It's too much pressure and I don't want to break the screens. I can, somebody else can break them so that I don't have to feel bad about it. But I'm going to get the glass cleaned off. Almost done with the windows finally. This took years off my life. I'm a dreamer. The blinds and the windows are clean. The blinds were really, like, it was really stuck on dust. They took a really long time. So I'm gonna not go through the drawers for this round. I think I'm gonna wanna spend a day where I just kinda go through a lot of the kitchen, get the pantry organized and stuff. So I'm gonna save that for that day. So stay tuned for that. But we are gonna finish. We're gonna wash the walls, wipe down the cabinets, and clean the counters and floors, and then call it good. I know I say, hopefully it won't take that long, and then everything seems to be taking longer than I want it to. But those blinds were disgusting, and I'm really glad that I took my time on them. They are so much better. Oh, they were so gross. So let's move on to, I think we're gonna clean the walls and then we'll wipe down the counters. I mean the cabinets. Clean the walls, then wipe down the cabinets. Oh, I need a snack. Well, the Oceder mop never lets me down and I know it's not gonna take long. This time it doesn't take long and it's because the Oceder mop is amazing. I love using this for cleaning the walls. It makes it go by so much faster. I prefer the mop head one. I know that you can use like your spray mop to clean your walls too, which is great. I really like the mop head. I think it does the best job. I've even used like the mop handle thing and put microfiber cloths over it. Um, but the mop head does the best job in my opinion for me other people like what they like but this is such a fast way to clean the walls Just so you can sleep tonight, I did get that spot that I missed with the mop just then. Don't worry, all is well in the world. That took me maybe 10 minutes and I even cleaned the door of the pantry. I decided to experiment again. I made sure that the mop head was 
just barely wet. I spun it for a while. I thought I'll try it on the cabinets. Uh, zero out of 10, do not recommend. I didn't like it. I was so worried about scuffing the cabinets and I couldn't get into the corners very well. It just wasn't worth it to me. I've mentioned before, if you look at my cabinets, the paint will chip off. I could not handle the pressure. So we're going old school, a very slightly damp microfiber cloth, and we're just gonna wipe everything down. This will go by quickly. And it did, it actually did. It, it didn't take super long. It was just exhausting because I was already tired. This last section is where the stools are and this gets so gross because the kids put their feet on the wall or cabinet, whatever you call this. This was disgusting. The camera doesn't do it justice. It is night and day now, but this is the last section I'm gonna clean and then we are gonna use the steam cleaner on the counters, clean the floors and be done. The steam cleaner, it, it kills a lot of bacteria and so I was really excited to use it. I keep the counters clean, but in my head, they're like extra triple clean now after the steam cleaner. Yeah. 
counters are done, I'm pulling out the Tinko. We're gonna clean the floors off, put everything back out and call it a day or two days, I guess. It's almost over. friends that is everything that i have for you if you've made it to the end here with me thank you so much i so appreciate you this was definitely a lot of hard work very worth it and i'm so glad that i did it and i hope that this was motivating for you that you are able to get done what you need to get done thank you again so much for your time i so appreciate it we are not done with the spring cleaning yet i still have bathrooms to tackle there's still a lot to do but breaking it up like this has been really, really nice and it just feels so good to accomplish so much. Make sure that you're subscribed if you're not already so that you don't miss a video. Thank you again so much for your time and I'll see you next time. Bye.
it's me Rita Peterson. Welcome back to my channel. Today is focusing on yard cleanup. I'm going to be cleaning up my garden boxes, tidying up my patio, getting things cleaned up for the warm weather, and I'm really looking forward to getting it done. We have some beautiful weather out today, so I'm gonna take advantage of the sunshine, get things cleaned up, and it's going to be so good when it's done. If you're new here, I am so glad you're here. If you're not already, make sure you click that subscribe button. Let's get started. Well, this was a multi-day event for me. I am fitting in all of the yard work and everything in between soccer practices, dance rehearsal, just all of the things. So on day one, our priority was just getting all of the lawn furniture off the patio, getting it sprayed out and getting the garden boxes weeded and then just kind of progressing through there and fitting in what I could when I could. Connor and I had spent the previous weekend gardening or not, well, yeah, I guess gardening, pulling weeds all around the edge of the fence and because we had bark chips coming or bark dust. I don't know. It's walk on bark. Uh, they were able to schedule us way earlier than we thought they would. Like next day they brought the bark. So we had to hustle and get all of the perimeter weeded and everything. So we left all the patio stuff for later. Um, so I'm just going to get everything pulled off of the patio. We had pulled out all of the, like the activities from the shed, like the dump trucks and everything once the warm weather hit. But this couch, it just, it's disgusting. I haven't really cleaned it off since last summer. We don't sit out here a lot when it's cold out and the kids just end up climbing all over it. So I'm going to get everything pulled off. We're going to use the pressure washer. It, I, full disclosure, I do kind of ruin some of the cushions with it, but it's outdoor lawn furniture. It still works as a sitable piece of furniture, so I'm not too broken up about it, and you'll kind of see some of the little spots, so you can learn what not to do, I guess. I hope you're having a good day today. I decided to grab the shop back and get the worst of all of like the loose dirt and everything. Alice went around, she was such a good helper and picked up a good amount of just the kind of the garbage things like the like glitter tassels from her bike pom-poms keep falling off. So they're just everywhere. But the shop back did a good job. We're just getting up all of the loose dirt and everything. I thought about maybe using the blower, but just decided the shop back would be the better option just because I wouldn't be blowing it out into the yard a bunch. This mat especially needed some love, so I'm gonna vacuum it off and then I'll also uh, power wash it as well. So I'm gonna vacuum up all of the patio and everything and then we will move on to the pressure washer. Oh, this patio was really gross. I'm no expert in pressure washing or power washing, whatever you call it, but I do know that I've done this to the rug before and have been moderately successful. As you can see, 
there's kind of soap coming up. There's been a lot of bubble solution that has been spilt on this rug over the months since the last time I cleaned it. I guess it's been a year since I cleaned it properly. Uh, so I did my best to get most of it off. I sprayed it, flipped it, sprayed it again. Honestly, again, it's an outdoor rug, so I'm just trying to get the worst of things off. It's not gonna be perfect, but I'm not gonna like get my carpet cleaner or anything. It's just not worth the effort in my opinion. So I just wanna get things kind of sprayed off and try to get the worst of the bubble solution. I had, I did not realize just how much had been spilled out there, but I'm like in hindsight, it, it tracks with how many times a sad kid has come in saying they spilled their bubbles. So it is what it is. I, we have another area of pavers over by the shed that gets lots of sunlight during the day. So I'm gonna have everything drying over there. So now that this rug is sprayed off, I will move on to the next one. And then we're just gonna spray all of the lawn furniture. Why wipe it down when I've got this pressure washer? dark spots on a few pieces of the cushions and so I as I was cleaning it I got a little too close to the fabric with the the pressure washer and as you can see I do I damage it a little bit I'm not broken up about it I can still sit on it it's not the worst it could have been worse I could have put like a legit hole in it or something um, but it is what it is and they still look cleaner so oh well it, it is nice to have these sprayed off though. Do I wish I hadn't damaged them? Absolutely, but here we are. didn't want to leave everything in the grass so I just moved it over to the pavers to dry. It didn't take very long which was nice but I did want to let them dry over the night. 
So everything is sprayed off. I'm going to work on the patio. I started off by just spraying the paint. I was really careful spraying the house because I didn't want to blast all the paint off, but there was some dust uh, on there. So I just lightly, not getting too close, spraying off the worst of the paint. And we're gonna pressure wash all the patio. I'm gonna give you the Cliff's Notes version. It's a lot of pressure washing and we have other things to do, other things I wanna share with you. So I'm gonna get this done. How are you doing? I hope you are doing so well. Leave a comment, just let me know what you have going on. I absolutely love hearing from you. To weeding it would you believe me if i told you it's been worse it's been worse and the weeds come out really easily out of the dirt and gravel so this doesn't take super long you'd think i would do it more like proactively once things start growing again but i don't essentially once the freezing stops you wake up one morning and everything's just weeds where i live so thanks oregon it's fine I do really love to keep a garden. I've said before, I'm no green thumb. I'm not an expert. If you came here for gardening tips, I don't know if I'm your girl. If you want just kind of hot mess, I planted these things and hope for the best though, you've come to the right place and I'm so glad you're here regardless. Uh, but I do love the time that I get to spend with my kids. They always wanna come out and help in the garden and we usually get something out of it. So, I mean, what more could you ask? So I'm gonna get all of these weeds pulled. I had sprayed some of them just on the gravel to kind of make things easier, but we're gonna get all of this stuff pulled out. Mommy, I got you a cold drink for you. Mommy, I got this for you. Oh. I think. Thank you. I got it, because I thought you wanted it. Why don't we all calm down? I think I'm the wrong size. Not enough room for everybody's egos. Why don't we all calm down? Why don't we all calm down? On and on and on it goes. Round and round the rodeo. Breathing out air for a minute. Taking my time to begin my head. On and on and on it goes. Swing it down in life, you know. Breathing out air for a minute. Yeah. Hey, would you rather sit right Make everything disappear You're playing my favorite song Put your rose colored glasses on What if we stay right here? Make everything disappear Lay low in the picture sun Put your rose colored glasses on Yeah Put your rose colored glasses on Yeah, he did it He likes it well, that was a very exciting moment when we found the ladybug. That ladybug was a big deal for a while. I'm swapping out of manual mode from pulling all the weeds to using the scuffle hoe. This thing's handy. I didn't like using it in the other one because it had those weeds that shoot the seeds everywhere. And so I just opted to pull them with my hands, but I just use a scuffle hoe and then we have this really like bendy rake that easily moves the weeds and stuff out. 
and it gets a lot of the dirt off so it saves time having to shake everything off. I still have to shake a little bit off, but it's a lot easier. So I'm gonna finish this garden box and then the scuffle hoe works. Am I calling it the right thing? I'm sorry if I'm not, and I'm sorry if I'm not technically using it right, but I'm using it in a way that works for me. <laughs> um, but it does a good job pulling up the weeds in this gravel, especially when the moss starts to grow in. I don't like to use a lot of chemicals around the garden boxes and the weed killer that we use is technically supposed to be safe for pets and kids not like for them to drink it but you know what I mean um but anyways that made getting all of this stuff up a lot easier and especially with the bendy rake it helps get a lot of the gravel off so almost done with day one getting all of the weeds pulled Alice and I are going to go get her brothers from school there's still all the activities that need to happen but it looks so much better and once we get everything planted, it's gonna be even better. So full of it. I wanna be the life of the party. I wanna dance with somebody. Be ooh, 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 ooh. I wanna be the life of the party. So we are on today to when Alice and I went to buy plants, I originally was only gonna get flowers and I wasn't gonna plant anything in the garden. But they had some nice starts that were kind of getting root bound that needed homes and I'm a sucker for something like that. So we are also going to plant in the garden. There were a few things that they didn't have. Um, I did want to plant cucumbers this year, but I can grow starts on my own for those um, or find them later. But I want to get the patio all put back together first. That was the priority on this day and then plant what I can in the garden. All of the kids participated in the garden planting, like because I kind of had to start later in the afternoon, they were all able to help plant everything, which was really, really nice. But we prioritized the flowers first, That, and you'll see. It's just a fun time to sit. Alice is so chatty, and she just has the funniest insights. So it was really fun to plant with her, even though she kind of left me to do most of it. Last thing for putting the patio back together, we have like a gas fire pit that we use and so we'll pull out these chairs and sit around it or when we have friends over, it's nice to have them, but I don't wanna keep them in the shed because as you could see, it was a two man job to get these put over here. <laughs> and Hugo was home, he's rarely home um, when I'm doing things. So it was really sweet to have him home. He helped out, we got it all moved and now Alice and I can plant the flowers. Had more of your smile. What if the wind could spread your love? What if your sweetness could reach everyone? There'd be no wars. Mm -hmm. Maybe the birds will sing about your heart. Maybe the trees will whisper the word. Maybe the sun. Spread your joy to the ones who lost their hope mm. Okay, so we have some magnolias Alice insisted on getting more strawberries. We do have kind of a bald patch over here so we can fill them in. I know they're gonna spread, but they were inexpensive. She was so excited. We've got two types of tomato, a large variety and a cherry tomato. We got some jalapenos, some snap peas, and a 
zucchini plant. I believe that is everything. Is that there should be. There is no one. I know they're marigolds and I call them magnolias. Oops. I love the name Marigold though. I tried to get Connor to let us name Alice Marigold and he just was not feeling it. But she does seem like an Alice, so I guess it worked out in the end. We did square foot gardening for a long time. We still have all of the grids that Connor made out of like wood pieces and screws to make it all square foot garden. Um, so I'll use a little bit of that to help with the snap peas. I didn't get that filmed. I ended up having to do that on a different day, but I'll show you here at the end. But otherwise I just placed everything where I wanted it and we'll get it planted. The zucchini, she's just kind of getting her own moment. Our zucchini plant always ends up getting really, really huge and taking up so much garden space, but we love all of the zucchini. It's a big deal. It's like the main star of our garden because it's the one we usually want the most. So she's just going to have half of this garden box. The rest will be strawberries and then everybody else is on the other side. Uh, so I'm just going to get it all planted. I have kids in and out helping. Hugo was very excited to help plant the marigolds, but other than that, we're almost done getting everything planted. Of you. Of you. Of you. That is everything that I have for you. Everything is planted. This was a lot of work, but it was definitely so worth it. I will show you. Here's the lattice for the snap peas. I just wrapped some string around it for them to climb up on. Hopefully it'll work this year. It didn't last year, but I planted them too late and everything died in the sun. But thank you so much for being here. If you aren't already, make sure you click that subscribe button. We still got spring cleaning to do. I appreciate your time. I hope you're doing well, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Hello, friends. It's me, Rhea Peterson. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we are finally tackling my bathroom. I have been doing a big spring cleaning series in the month of April, deep cleaning a number of areas of my house, and my bathroom is the last place to hit, and it has been neglected for most of the month. There's a lot to clean, areas that I haven't touched since we moved into the house, like these ceiling fans. They were disgusting. Plus my shower, the toilet, everything is just really gross from me not having the time to clean it out. If you're new here, I am so glad that you are joining me. I hope you're all doing well. We have a lot to do and I'm even going to be updating some of the decor in my bathroom and I'm really excited to share it with you. Let's not waste any time. If you aren't already, make sure you click that subscribe button. Let's get started. So here are all the supplies, things that I thought I might need. It just will depend on what we run into while we're doing this. Um, the steam cleaner I may or may not use. Um, 
there's some spots on the grout that I might try it on, but I also don't want to make the grout in worse shape. So we're going to play it by ear with a lot of these cleaning products. Just kind of go with the flow. And then I've got some vinegar and baking soda for the sinks, which I'll talk about a little bit more when we get to that. And then I'm going to use the O Cedar Spin Mop today. We're going to use it to clean all of the tile up here and then I'll probably put some new water in and we'll use it to clean the floor as well. Unless I want to drag my tinco up here, which is tempting if I'm being honest. But that's what we're working with. We are going to start over here with all the counters, get everything cleared off, clean the glass. We want to clean the lights up here. They're getting pretty dusty and then we'll clean out the sinks. So while I'm cleaning off the counter, I'll show you earlier in the morning, I went in and filmed a little bit of our shower. We do have some mold. It's not terrible. This is a little more than I usually have in there, but like I said in my intro, it had been a while since I cleaned the shower out. So I got my Clorox bleach spray and sprayed everything down. This was probably at like eight o'clock or so in the morning when I did this and I didn't start cleaning the bathroom until closer to lunchtime. So I let this sit for a while so that it could kind of help start getting rid of some of the darker spots that seems to be the best way for me to have like the most success with getting rid of the mold spots in that white grout especially just because we've always had problems with it you have to be really careful scrubbing it even with sealant and everything it still kind of comes out i don't think it cured i don't know anything about grout it definitely needs to be regrouted again and then just not used for like i don't know a month but i'm kind of holding out for the summer when it's a little bit warmer because it is pretty humid here in Oregon. But now that the counters are cleared off, we are gonna clean off the lights. I'm just using the Thieves Cleaner and a microfiber cloth. I'm gonna dust everything off. This shouldn't take too long. These were not as dusty as I thought they would be, which is good, because the last time I cleaned them, they were disgusting. Something in the air, always something dead in the air. There's like toothpaste in the grout in here and then stuff kind of gets caked on on this part. So I think I am going to use my steam cleaner on the counter and then I will loosen things up in the sink a little bit, wipe that out, get that all cleaned up. I'm going to do baking soda and vinegar in these. When these were installed, the builder, the mechanisms were bent on the inside. So they're really, really fiddly to get in and out. And just by peeking, it's not too bad. So I'm just gonna do it that way with the vinegar and baking soda. Hope that it just kind of breaks everything down okay. Um, and avoid pulling these out because I don't wanna break them completely. I pulled this one out a couple of months ago. That's when we discovered everything was bent. It wasn't me. I didn't bend it. <laughs> it was built that way <laughs> or put together. Like it just happened when it was put together. Um, so we just decided now is not the time to do that. So I did the royal we. I don't want to do it, so I'm not gonna. So I'm gonna get this all cleaned off and then um, most of this will be done and we will move on to the shower. I've got this feeling. I'm feeling you could be the one. I see no reason. Why I should ever let you go Don't wanna wake up 
lips I'm dreaming because you know I can't get enough of this feeling you're giving me don't wanna wake up no, I don't wanna wake up I don't wanna wake up without you baby without Well, if I had my choice, I wouldn't have a tile countertop in the bathrooms. I would have like quartz or something, but wasn't my choice, so here we are, maybe someday. But I think the steam cleaner did a good job of getting the worst of the stuff out of the grout, so I'm not mad about it. When I'm moving on to the sinks, I tried to be really careful with the steam cleaner around the drain because I didn't want to mess up any of the seal. There might have been a little bit of damage. I don't know, it's hard to tell because we have brushed bronze hardware and it discolors really easily. I definitely would not choose it in the future, but I was able to blast out some of the dirt. We're gonna clean the sinks out with the pink stuff, get it all scrubbed, and then we'll take care of the drain and I'll talk about that a little bit more then. But I hope you're doing well. What do you have going on? I didn't check in with you earlier, but I hope you're doing well. Hope you're having a good week. I am gonna keep plugging along here. Let me know down in the comments how you're doing. Okay, I'm almost done cleaning off the sinks. I just need to go over and do Connors really quick. I'm going to do baking soda in the sink drains and pour a little bit of vinegar on it to help kind of break down any potential clogs that might be in there. I know there's differing opinions on whether this works or not, and I get that people have differing opinions on it, I am doing it just because I know that I have had success with it before and just kind of moving things around, helping loosen up any small clogs that I have. Anything bigger, I use like Drano, but this one was a bad. There was just some buildup in there and I think that this did a good job and I was careful and I did have a window open. Okay, so I know I said I was gonna do the shower next, but I'm gonna let the bleach spray sit on the grout for a little bit longer to continue to like get rid of the dark spots. And we're gonna switch gears and we're gonna switch over and we're gonna clean the ceiling fan because it's really gross. In theory, it should just come down. And then attach. Oh, oh gee. It's not too bad up there. Um, 
This is nasty though, so we're gonna wash this. <laughs> You doing fine cause you got me I don't wanna break your little bubble But you gotta wake up to reality Cause I can see in your eyes Your head is full of dreams Tears are a proof of failure You just gotta let them flow without judge There's so many ways to be happy So to wash these, I'm just using the Dawn Power Wash and some warm water. The little one wasn't bad. I mean, it was really dusty, obviously, but the bigger one is right next to the shower. It had a lot more like caked on dust on there from all of the moisture. And it was a lot more of a pain to get clean. In hindsight, I wish I had filled the sink a little bit with water and let it soak for a while. But in the moment I had already cleaned the small one and I was just kind of moving along. I ended up getting one of my grout scrubbers to try to scrub in there. But next time I will definitely just let it soak for a little bit, kind of agitated in the water to help loosen that stuff up. It'll make it so much easier. You just gotta trust the right. You don't have to be scary. You just gotta follow the light. You're able to be happy. my bathtub i am just using the thieves cleaner again it was not bad i vacuumed it out a little bit it does catch like dust and hair it's right next to where i typically get ready so when i blow dry or anything hair will land in it but otherwise it's not too bad i have been using it very sporadically now that i'm getting into the running season i've been doing some epsom salt soaks but otherwise this tub just doesn't get a huge amount of use so i was not going to spend the time and energy really scrubbing it out i have my little rubbermaid scrubber just in case i ran into anything but for the most part this thing was clean so i'm gonna wipe this out and clean the window and then we're finally going to tackle the shower i was worried you blow my reputation but if you get it's not on me yeah 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 the way you make it me shiver your hands on myself i keep pulling the trigger all right this very thing of people like them oh no no but darling on my mind i'm feeling so fly up in the zone now i'm like a golden crown world and high up in the sky Starting off, I'm just rinsing off all of the bleach spray so it's safe to kind of walk around in there and I'm going to use my Oceder mop and we are going to scrub all of the tiles up above that I can't reach with my hands, make quick work of it. It's just warm water and Dawn dish soap. The way you make it, make it, make it, make it, make it, make it, make it,
my big scrubber here. We're just using the Dawn Power Wash on the glass. I love my shower. It is so bright and I love all the sunshine that comes through in the morning, but it is kind of a beast to keep clean and I try my hardest to stay on top of it. These tools make it a lot easier and honestly, nothing beats just good old dish soap. You could get all of the bathroom cleaners in the world, but there's just something about dish soap that just does such a good job on so many different things. So I do really like to use it on the glass in here with the scrubber. We're gonna clean off the floors. I'm gonna pull up the drain, clean that out. Made some very disgusting discoveries, but we're just gonna work on the shower, get everything clean. I'm just using dish soap and water. all the floors rinsed everything off I had both the scrubbers I used the smaller one in the spots that were black before it was harder to find them though because that bleach spray took care of pretty much all of it so I didn't have to really scrub any places really really hard I was able to just go over them easily with the scrubber but the squeegee we use after every shower which also helps keep the glass clean and then I'm just cleaning the outside with the thieves cleaner we're almost done with the cleaning. We still need to tackle the tiny toilet room. That toilet is disgusting. I'm gonna clean the baseboards first, kind of make my way over there, use my little squishy eraser thing that I have. I like using this on the baseboards. That's still kind of one of the only uses that I have for it, but I did have some success with it on my cabinets in the bathroom as well. So finding multiple purposes for it. I love a, a product that I can use for more than one thing. Noticed some buildup here in the bowl, kind of just in the back of the bowl. So I grabbed my pumice stone and I'm just kind of gently scrubbing that out. These things are so handy for this kind of stuff. I am not wearing gloves. To be fair, I did just clean inside the toilet and I'm also going to clean outside of the toilet and then wash my hands. So don't worry.
Okay, so I remembered to clean the glass in here. Would have been awful if I'd forgotten that of all the things to forget. Um, but before I do the floor, I'm going to just kind of put all of the decor back out. I got a couple of new things in here to kind of just refresh the bathroom, make it a little bit more pleasant to be in and maybe a little less echoey. It's very echoey in here. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna do that, get the floors clean and then we're done. I'll need Connor's help to put those back up. I'm not tall enough to get the clips in right. So I'm gonna see if he can help me do that. My bathroom is pretty boring. It's taken a while for me to kind of figure out what I want to do with it. I just picked up some decor items. All of them are from Target and they're, they were all pretty much on sale or clearance. Uh, the only thing exception was this pearl essence jar that I got in the dollar spot. This did come in pink as well, but I opted for the clear one. I just wanted to change things up and not have the matching jars. And I don't use these face pads very much, so I didn't need that many out. So we're swapping that out, just making the counter look a little bit nicer. I do love how this turned out. I grabbed some new towels. They're hearth in hand. They were also clearance. I really like them. They're really good quality. They're a little yellow for the bathroom, but I still really like them. And a lot of our towels are old. They were like wedding gifts and they're wearing out. So I've just kind of been slowly updating the towels and I buy them in threes. So when Connor and I aren't using them, I use them in the kids' bathroom. So they hopefully will last. This plant also Target. It's kind of giving 90s feel to me. I don't know, I might get like a new pot for the bottom of it or swap it out for something else. I don't know how I feel about it yet. Let me know down in the comments what you think. I definitely need like blinds and a picture over there, but I still undecided. This picture I got a while ago and I love it, but I just couldn't find the perfect spot. So I guess the toilet room is the perfect spot for it. Again, undecided. I still kind of wish that it was downstairs, so I might move it, but it is nice to have something in here. This room is just desolate. And then finally, I updated my garbage can. I had had that floral garbage can that it had been in there probably since I was like 13 and it was definitely time to get rid of it and swap it out with something new but that is all the decor i'm just gonna clean the floors and we are almost done My friends that is everything that i have for you it feels really good to have everything in here deep cleaned especially those ceiling fans they were disgusting but overall it's just always really nice to have a nice clean bathroom and i do like the decor it feels just a little bit more cozy which i absolutely love but thank you so much for being here i so appreciate your time I hope you are doing well. If you haven't already, make sure you click that subscribe button. Continue to hang out with me. I am so glad for your time. Again, I hope you're doing well and I'll see you next time. Bye. It's me, Rhea Peterson. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are focusing on all things closet. I am going to be doing a massive clothing purge. Maybe shift things around if it will work, but mostly the focus on is just 
getting rid of things, getting things clean, getting things organized in my closet. If you're new here, I'm so glad you're here. My name is Rhea Peterson. I upload typically twice a week on Tuesdays and Saturdays, and I cover things like cleaning motivation, organization, mom life, food, and I am so glad you're here. If you haven't already, make sure that you have hit that subscribe button. Let's get started. Okay, so I'm gonna clear this shelf off first. I'll probably pull stuff off of this. This is just an old set of cubbies that I painted. Originally, Connor and I had these when we first got married because they were cheaper than drawers and it's just kind of stuck. Um, I'd love to do like a whole closet organization system, that kind of thing, but they're expensive and I don't wanna do it until I know what I actually need to organize, so. I'm just gonna pull everything off of these shelves, get them wiped down, and kind of categorize. I know there's stuff up here that doesn't even need to be up here that we can get rid of. Um, and then I'll tackle thinning out all of the clothes. Hopefully this should be quick. Maybe, I don't know. Well, I was looking really forward to getting this closet taken care of. I've mentioned before, Connor and I, like the areas that we have are usually the bottom of the list when it comes to like decorating or new furniture, just because we have three children and their areas are changing more. They're growing faster, their tastes change and like they physically need bigger things like bigger beds and bigger clothes and so a lot of our focus and funds go to making sure that they have spaces that are functional for them and our spaces just kind of end up being a mismatch, mishmash of things that are left over. So I'm excited to kind of start putting our focus in our areas to make them more calm, peaceful, more to our taste and just nicer in general but that can get expensive so trying to be smart about it as well this closet as you can see has just we've just been throwing things in there it's not been a focus it's dusty and it's cluttered and like I said as much as I wish is that I could be able to just get like a whole new closet system and completely do it it, it wouldn't be smart to do until I know what we have, what I need to organize. So getting this all done and kind of just taking measurements, making notes as we kind of sit in it once it's organized will make it that much easier to come up with a plan, to budget for it, and to make it functional for our needs. This cubby up here, I do not like it up there, but it does help with the space. I did have some personal items, things that I didn't really want on camera, so I cleared that out separately. But honestly, even though it's not pretty, having these nine extra cubbies in here for stuff is kind of handy. So I'm gonna keep it in there for a little bit longer. So this is everything I pulled off the shelves. A lot of these bins are just full of like old bathing suits and stuff that we don't even wear. Um, I can probably pare down these bags. And then this bin is actually my winter summer bin. So that is staying, but I do need, I'm gonna pull out some of the summer stuff. I might as well, maybe it'll make summer come faster. I don't know. And then just some old stuff. Was anybody else a big scarf person? back in the day. I wore pashminas all the time, um, but I haven't worn one in like, uh, I'm very, I'm very young, so not that long. Actually, it's been a really long time, so I'm probably gonna get rid of these, and I don't know why this is in here, but it's cute. 
I'll let Alice play with it. I probably confiscated it for some reason. But any donations, I'm gonna just put on the bed. I already have some of Connor's old running shorts over there, but I'm just gonna go through these bins really fast um, and then start thinning out all of this. Well, another reason why I cleared off that top shelf was because I knew there was going to be a lot of stuff that I could get rid of out of these bins, just old bathing suits, things I don't wear anymore, and getting it just organized. I have old running equipment that I don't really use in here. I have just these bags that I couldn't even get to because they were on the bottom and under a bunch of stuff. So I knew that this would be quick work. And the bags, they're all bags that I use so I didn't really need to go through all of them or purge any of these bags. I like to have options for backpacks and stuff depending on what we're doing as a family, where we're going, if we're traveling. And so I do like to keep around a couple of options because honestly, I like to make sure that my bag kind of matches what I'm wearing. So I do have them, but I they're all bags that I do like and that are really, really functional. And then I have some nicer purses that I don't really use that often but I'm holding on to them on the off chance that Alice might want them. So they are staying, but I did need to get them into a dust cover so that they aren't completely useless by the time she's interested in that kind of stuff. But I knew that this one would be quick and we're gonna move into the closet and get these clothes cleared out. I like to run. Uh, fun fact, they do not put how long it took you to run these races, so. That's my piece of advice. I need to find a good way to hang these, so if you have any ideas on what I can do with these, leave them in the comments. I feel like this hanger is gonna give up soon. <laughs> I was most excited to go through all of the clothes. I made sure that I touched every item, even if it was just for a second, to make sure that I wanted to keep it or get rid of it. I have a lot of pretty items that I haven't worn in ages, so they're not doing me any good hanging in the closet waiting for the off chance that I'm gonna wear them. So we're passing them on to give someone else joy now. I have had three children. My body's been a lot of different sizes. There's a lot of things that just don't fit my body anymore. I'm finding my style now that I'm not constantly changing sizes with children. And so I've been replacing items, finding things that will last longer, really just finding my style, what coloring actually works for me. So getting rid of a lot of this stuff was really, really nice. There were a lot of things that I instantly just knew I didn't need to keep. And some things I, it was a little bit harder, but honestly, getting this all thinned out was just, it was just a really nice feeling to do it. So I'm gonna keep clearing out all these clothes. We have shoes to go through. We have all of the cubbies. I'm gonna play some music. We're gonna go through all my clothes, get it all done. This felt so good to get rid of so much.
hanging clothes and sweaters are done, we are moving on to shoes and the cubbies. I used to work for Nordstrom and I did sell shoes for a number of years. And I've just always had an overabundance of shoes. So I made it my goal to really get rid of as many as I could. I had already gone through my high heels when I did a closet purge in the fall. So I didn't need to touch those but I hadn't really gone through sandals or anything, even though it had already been summer. So it did feel really good to go through these. I got rid of a number of pairs of shoes. I just kept flats, things that will go with like my dresses or nice outfits, depending on an event that we might be going to. But otherwise I did pare down the shoes quite a bit and now it's time to pare down the cubbies. This honestly was a harder section than the hanging clothes. I, you know, I wear pajamas, I will wear like a daytime outfit. I also have clothes that I wear when I'm doing a lot of cleaning, like leggings and t-shirts and things like that. So I do keep a little bit more here than some might think is necessary, but I kept things that I wear regularly and got rid of a lot of stuff that I likely was not going to wear anymore. But there's also just a lot of stuff that with the summer coming, I'm not sure if I'm gonna wear it. So there were a few things that I saved that were for the summer and we will do another closet purge come fall and get rid of whatever doesn't make the cut this summer. anybody else phasing out the skinny jeans I did keep a couple of pairs because I love them we are on the last cubby this is my workout clothes I have a lot of race shirts that I don't really know what to do with I'll wear them occasionally though if you have any ideas I know people have like made blankets or hung things on the wall I don't know if I'm that person but I am open to any and all suggestions on what you think I should do with all of those shirts I have a few favorites that I like to wear, but some of the other ones I don't, but it feels weird to just get rid of them. I don't know, I guess I could just get rid of them, but that is all of the clothes that I went through. I got rid of shoes, belts, all of the sweaters. I got rid of a ton of items. I counted the hangers and I think I got rid of over 20 hanging items and that's just the hanging items alone. I should have counted everything. It was wild. I got rid of so much. So I'm gonna get everything packed up into bags, get it set aside for donation. I need to vacuum in the closet still and get all of the shelves put back together and then we can see the final result. I'll show you where I put everything. It felt so good to get rid of all of this stuff.
here's the final product. I just put my seasonal stuff up here and just a few things that I'm holding on to. I moved my sweaters up off of the floor because I end up just throwing things on top of them. So I will pull them down when I need them, but for the most part, they're fine up off the floor and it will keep the kids from climbing in them because they do that a lot. That is all of Connor's CPAP stuff. So I'm just gonna keep it in there. I don't wanna mess with that because he knows where everything is. Up here, I mean, it's still just a non, like this is just not meant for a closet, but we have it. So I'm going to utilize it until we come up with a plan on what our permanent solution is going to be. I just have old journals up there. Connor and the boys Taekwondo stuff, like their broken boards from their belt tests and things. My old purses that I want to hold on to for Alice. And then these bins just have odds and ends in them. And then just some of the bags that I still use occasionally. I use a lot smaller of a purse usually, but sometimes I need something a little bigger. Running stuff. And that's it so like I'm glad I kept this up here it is not beautiful but it is functional so can't complain too much believe it or not I did pare down my clothes it just seems like a lot but I do wear all of these things pretty regularly so I held on to that I did get rid of quite a bit in here I got rid of a number of shoes the only things I have on the floor now are just some of my slippers and my Uggs, which I will never part with. I love them so much. And then just my dress shoes and stuff, but it is a lot more pared down. It's a lot less overwhelming. Well, we definitely have to do a before and after. So I'm gonna show you the before and the after while I say my goodbyes. Thank you so much for your time. I so appreciate it. I hope this gave you some motivation to clean out your closet. It definitely was a labor of love, but it was so worth it. It felt so good to get rid of all of those clothes that I just did not need. They were just taking up space and there was no way I was gonna wear all of them. But. Thank you so much for your time. I so appreciate it. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. I hope you'll continue to hang out with me. And especially, I hope that you are doing well. I will see you next time. Bye.